Hello everyone, today I'd like to talk through a forward synthesis of this molecule. Uh, I want to use the Fisher Indoor Synthesis to help me do this. If you like the style of this presentation, I'm trying to aim for a casual way of talking about organic chemistry. Please do consider giving the video a like and subscribing to my channel. Okay then, I'm going to talk about the synthesis of this molecule sumatriptan as a way of discussing uh, disconnections that are relevant if you're trying to make a molecule that looks a bit like this. So sumatriptan was released as a pharmaceutical by Glaxo in the early 90s as a treatment for migraines. On the left hand side there's a sulfamide functional group and on the right hand side there's an amine and in the middle there's an indole. So a sulfamide and an amine they're pretty stable steady functional groups and the indole is going to be the target of my disconnections because it's right in the middle of the molecule. So if I break up the molecule there, it will give me two halves and that will increase convergency in my forward synthesis. So an absolute classic way of disconnecting uh, an indole would be to disconnect across here and use a Fischer indole synthesis. So going backwards, that will take me back to the aryl hydrazine. So that's the benzene ring with two nitrogens and there's an R group in that para position and an aldehyde. And this aldehyde has to represent, well, the remaining carbons. So there's one, two, three, four in my original molecule. So I need four carbons and an amine. And to go back, the plan would be to use some acid and some heat. And we'll go through the mechanism for that later. Now in the forward synthesis, we might want to think about starting from a molecule like this. Lots of um, nitro substituted benzene rings are commercially available and something like this might have been made from a nitration of an aromatic note that these are in a 1-4 or a para relationship to each other and this relationship could be set up using sort of classical conditions. But to use this molecule in my Fischer indole synthesis I need to convert that nitro group into my hydrazine so for the time being I'm just going to abbreviate this as aromatic. And the first step I'm going to do is to reduce using hydrogen on palladium on carbon to uh, reduce my aromatic compound down to an amine. Now I need a way of turning this into my hydrazine and quite a good way to do that is to go via a diazonium salt. So something like this and how we might go about doing that well to get to this stage I need to use nitrous acid and to get to this stage I need to use some sort of reducing agent. So now I'd just like to run through the mechanism for the diazotation reaction here. So nitrous acid is itself a pretty strong acid. So every so often in equilibrium, it will be able to deprotonate itself. That will give me these products. And this one on the left um, can form a really powerful electrophile by kicking out that water. This is the nitrosyl cation. So next in our mechanism, our nucleophile, so that's our aryl amine, can come along and find a powerful electrophile to form this intermediate with a couple of acidic protons here, one of which I could remove using water and tautomerize this species to move the hydrogen to this position at the top on the oxygen. So a way of thinking about what we need to do with this intermediate is have a look at its resonance structure which makes it a bit more clear that there's an acidic proton here. So that proton should be easily removed. And at this point, I should probably note that there, there will be the E and the Z isomers present in equilibrium here. So one more step to go. I've got some oxygen lone pairs here that can also pick up a proton. That will generate a good leaving group here and my nitrogen lone pair can kick in and kick out the water. And that gives me a good entropy driving force for forming this slightly strange looking diazonium species. So just popping back up to the top here for my synthesis, I've got a step for forming a diazonium species and I just need some sort of reduction to turn that into my hydrazine. So e.g. Um, just to mix it up a bit, tin HCl would be an appropriate set of conditions for that reaction. So now let's just have a think about the Fischer indole step here. Now on a large scale, you might use a surrogate for this type of aldehyde, say the dimethyl acetal, that might be a more stable starting material. We'll be able to reveal the aldehyde functional group in there in the presence of acid and water, for example. 
but for my mechanism, I'm just going to use the aldehyde form. Okay, then for my Fischer indole synthesis, my first step is to react this with the aldehyde. So I've got my hydrazine and my aldehyde components, but I also need some acid in here. So my reagents are going to be some acid, and I'm going to need to heat this for reasons we'll see in a second. The acid will activate my aldehyde like this, and I've got two nitrogen lone pairs that could act as nucleophiles. This one closer to the benzene ring, well, that's all a bit delocalized into the aromatic system, so it's less available for nucleophilic attack. So this one on the end that's also more sterically accessible is the one that's going to do the reaction. Now, when I react uh, an amine with an aldehyde under such conditions, it's usual to lose water and generate the imine here. So this functional group is the imine. Now, imines in acid are always in equilibrium with their enamine form. And you can have two enamine forms here, the E or the Z. But for now, I'm just going to draw this E enamine as it's likely to be the dominant one in equilibrium on steric grounds. Of course, it being in equilibrium means that we're under thermodynamic control. Now here we have a classic setup for a sigmatropic rearrangement. We have a weak nitrogen nitrogen sigma bond and a six membered ring set up perfectly for a free free rearrangement. And the pericyclic arrows will look something like this. And this is the step that needs the heat in the reaction. Okay, I'm just going to do a couple of proton rearrangements. We note that this proton here is really acidic because removing this proton will restore aromaticity. So something like this. But at the same time, just to save myself some space, I'm going to protonate this nitrogen as well. Overall, that's a transfer of protons via the solvent. And cunningly, that now gives me a nucleophile right next to an electrophile over here. So in acid, that will just cyclose. And Jack Baldwin is okay with that because it's a five exo trig cyclization. So now I'm nearly there with my indole ring. So I notice that I've got these two nitrogens here. Well, actually we can see that this ring closure is just reversible and we could also transfer a proton. So this will give me a good leaving group here in ammonia and this could leave quite easily via some sort of E1 process. Uh, the, room, the carbon cation that's left behind will be stabilized by this nitrogen lone pair. And finally, I've got one proton here, which is really acidic because if I were to remove it, I would generate a 10 pi aromatic indole system. So I could use just use my ammonia, that's a pretty decent base coming in to remove that final proton. And that takes me to my final product uh, over here. And if I wanted to count electrons, for example, just to justify that it's a very stable ring system, I've got two electrons here, two, two going around the outside of the ring, there's two here and two from the lone pair. So that's 10 pi aromatic. So under thermodynamic conditions, we should drive towards this product. Right, that's it for today. If you like the style of this presentation and you want to see more videos on retrosynthesis or forward synthesis or mechanisms in organic chemistry, do give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks very much.